Hi everybody, this is Diane. I am still struggling to figure out what I'm going to be doing with these um, Woodlands journals. I have decided on which book covers I want to use, so I think I'll be making three. This one definitely, because I have a lot of things already prepped from a few years ago with the cute little chipmunk on the front. This one definitely, and that was a recent purchase, and I decided um, to go for this Reader's Digest with the beautiful brown design also. So that means I'll be using these two to make some owl journals before too long. Um, there, I probably won't go right into the owl journals as soon as I'm done with the woodlands. Um, I have to make that horse journal before Christmas, but I'd like to get it done. And there are other journals I want to make too, so eventually I'll get to those owl journals um, before too, too long into the fall. So what I need to do is figure out what pages are going to go with what journal, and then I can focus on one journal at a time. But I might make some ephemera for all the journals um, before I start focusing on one journal. So I just need to decide on pages and make some ephemera. So let me show you what I've been doing um, since I saw you last regarding these journals. I have pulled some scrapbook paper that I can use, and I've already cut these to size for this journal. I did some printing. I printed some William Morris papers because some of them are beautiful for woodlands. And you get a nice, it's eight and a half by 11. Um, I have it written down here where I got it from. It's William Morris Bumper Pack, 14 sh or 40 sheets. <coughs> and the uh, Etsy shop is the Torn Page. I'm going to try to link all of these. Because I have, I have a whole bunch of different Etsy digitals that I'm going to be using. So you get a, a nice 8.5 by 11 inch page. And my printer it just is just a very tiny border uh, of white around it. And I printed this which is uh, from Digital Magpie, and it's called Trees. And it's trees with lined paper. Can you see the lines? And that fit really nicely, and that has a tiny little border too, but I just cut the papers down. Just I treated it just like a scrapbook paper, 12 by 12 paper, and um, cut it down to the size I needed. Uh, these pages are a good size for this journal. I didn't trim them at all, so it fits in there really well. And these are from um, Ephemera's Vintage Garden, and it's called Woodland Wings. I'm going to set these two aside for the owl journals, and um, that leaves me three, so I can put one in each signature. And they're, I love the bright orange colors, and um, they feature birds because it's called Woodland Wings, but I like the collaged look that she has on them. I've had that this digital in my um, did on my folders in my computer for quite a long time, so I'm happy to, to be using them now. So I've got to start on getting those pages ready. Um, I don't have anything for that one yet, and these I like I said these were already in here. So I pulled some Mrs. Or, um, Edith Holden pages that will go good with the woodlands. I um, The box of ephemera and supplies that I went through with you in the other video, I just went back through there and pulled out things that I can use as pages. So I have the wallpaper and some book pages, stationery. Yeah, that's what I pulled from that box that I can use as pages. What else did I do? Oh, I did have these ready for this book. I, meant, I mentioned these. These are uh, Calico Collage, I think. No, not, I don't remember. I have to look now. Um, but they're... I forgot the name of it. But I showed you these in the other video, and they're not exactly woodlands, but I like the color. <clears throat> it's it's supposed to be coffee dye and doilies, um, but I like the color with these, and, uh, and the size was perfect. 
I just trimmed off a, a little bit on this edge to make it fit. And as you can see, I'm gonna I'm doing some stenciling. So I've got three of the six pages done. I've got some more stenciling to do. Um, oh, I have this. I guess this one is going to get put back in my supply of covers that I'm not going to use at this time. So I've got some more William Morris that I can um, put into some of these journals. I just need to see you get this just a very thin border and this page fits nicely on it. So I've got quite a few. I've printed a lot and I figured if, if it's too many for these journals I can always use them for other things. And I can use them in the owl journals too. Um, I have the old design shops flashcards. I printed this from Digital Collage Club. Um, these are all things I've had in my uh, folders, in my laptop, my download folders. I have everything organized. I could go to the folder that said Woodlands and find things like this. I have a Mrs. Coggs folder, but even her, her images that I'm using, I put these in the Woodlands folder so I would, wouldn't forget about them. So these are nice um, cards that I can put in my journals. Um, these are, um, I don't remember. I'll have to look because there's no name on these. But um, I, I have quite a few pages of these, but I only printed these two and that one got printed wrong. But I'll use what I can of that. So beautiful mushrooms, but the whole this the whole thing is mushrooms. I don't remember if it's four or five pages or what, but I knew I didn't need that many, so I just printed a couple. And then there's this mushroom card also. And I don't have the name of that one available right now. And my two Mrs. Coggs sets that I can use are forest creatures. I just printed these today. And into the forest, or yeah, into the forest. I probably won't include the ones that have the people. Maybe her. I like her. I don't know. Look at the bears, little bear cubs. And then the scrapbook paper I have here ready to decide what journal it's going to go into so I can cut it to size. What I thought I would do today in the video, oh I'm not done showing you my supplies. <clears throat> These are in addition to what I showed you from that box. I got out my um, um, embossing folders with the forest animals. These are both from Joann's Park Lane Designs I think it is. It's their brand and the owls. And from my ephemera binder I pulled out some things. I got these in a happy mail, these leaf die cuts. And I thought these were would be a perfect perfect journals to use them in. I also got these in hap, in a happy mail. These circles, they're they're thick. Um, and stamped with ferns and edged beautifully, so I might use some of those. Um, I have these stamps, but I already had these items stamped in my ephemera folder, so I will try to use these. So these things that I pulled out of my ephemera binders, I can use them to embellish pockets and to make clusters and just little embellishments. I had a couple stamped things that I pulled out from my stash. Just that. Looks like a almost like a Queen Anne's lace, but it's not very full. And this doesn't have anything to do with woodlands, but I like the burlap, and I might use that somewhere in these journals. Something that I made a while ago. And some die cuts I have. These large-ish weeds. And some little smaller pieces. So, I have a lot to work with, that is for sure. All right, then I got into my stamps. Now, when you're doing woodlands, you have a lot you can work with. You have animals and plants, mushrooms, trees. 
so I have these weeds. This is what I had stamped on that vellum. The mushrooms, and you saw I had some of those stamped. This one has a nice patch of weeds, and even that would be nice in that for labels. This, I don't think I've used this one yet. <clears throat> this is from Stampin' Up, and so it's got the trees and, of course, the animals. Um, these are all Stampin' Up stamps. They're all leaves. Yep. I thought, I thought there was an acorn, but I don't know where the acorn is. Um, I've got these animals, Woodlands animals. The, this is Stampin' Up, and this tree, got these cute owls, a bird, a bunny, some more owls, another tree, and more mushrooms. So, <laughs> do you think I have enough stuff to make Woodlands journals? I think it's about time I got busy on these. So what I would like to do today is make some more stuff because I want to put some alcohol ink on some tracing paper so I can make some windows like I did in my other ones, my other Woodlands journals. And I just did it in my seashore, seashell, and seahorse journals, too. And I had some tracing paper. Oh, I set it aside over here. <clears throat> so I just have some tracing paper. I think I got this at Walmart. This is Canson brand. So it's just, it's not a, it's not a heavy, you can get a heavier tracing paper than this. This is what I have. Before I get going with the alcohol ink, I want to try the Tim Holtz Dis Distress Oxide Sprays. I think this is a little bit different than this. Yeah, this isn't the same. I'm going to use them both. I have another piece of this one. So let's take a piece of this. This is the Canson. And I'm going to get my splat box and try using some sprays just to see how that goes. I treated myself to this a while ago because I was ordering some Tim Holtz stuff I think from a scrapbook.com or something like that and I saw this and I thought yeah I might as well it wasn't that expensive and it's called a splat box and I think it is from Ranger Tim Holtz I don't want a whole lot of orange but we'll just lightly mist it and as soon as you spray tracing paper get it wet. It's going to curl. Mm, I'm going to use walnut stain. Not too much. I don't want to make it too dark. And mustard seed. it with a little more orange because I kind of overpowered it with the yellow. Okay. I'm going to dry it. Just I'm not going to dry all of them that we do. I just want to see how this looks.
completely dry where the bigger splots are. It's not dry. It would take me a little longer to do that. But I like the way that turned out. I hope it's showing up well on camera. I'm going to do one more. Um, I'm going to try it with this different facing paper. I think this one might be a little bit heavier. It has a different feel to it anyway. And I want it to be more brown and orange, I think. Or I want to use I want to use some green. Let's try iced spruce. And then after we do this, I'm going to go to the alcohol inks. And mustard seed. That is pretty bright, that mustard seed. I, I would like a more golden color. But if I put another color on top of it. Oh, I did ice spruce. This one is peeled paint. That's kind of bright too. But this is for a forest journal, and I like that ferny color there, or lichen color. Doesn't that look like the color of lichen? And I'm going to add some vintage photo. Okay. Wow. That's just brown. Okay, I like that. That's different. Now we have two different things to work with. I don't need a very big piece of these to make the windows. I'm going to set these aside. And get out another piece. And we'll work with alcohol inks. got the colors out that I wanted and then I set them somewhere so they wouldn't be in my way when I started my video. Now I don't know where I put them. I'm looking around my room and I don't see them. Oh, that's because they're still in the tin. I didn't actually get out the colors I wanted. I just got the tin out. All right, I was looking for the bottles. So, lemonade to possibility. This one is lettuce. I'm gonna want some greens, but probably not limeade. Greens, um, browns, orange, yellow. I don't know what color citrus is. I'll have to check that out. The browns I have are ginger and I don't want peach bellini, latte, caramel, butterscotch. One of these leaked. Oh, it's this one, the butterscotch. It leaked. So there's not a whole lot left in there. That was before I got my little box to put them in. It tipped over in my drawer. Okay. Now, I don't have a yellow. Oh, I have lemonade. Yes, I do have a yellow. I'm going to see what this peach bellini looks like. Maybe I do want it. I'll just put a little on this corner. Oh, yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, it's kind of an orange color. I like it. See how the alcohol ink just spreads right out there? So, I am going to start with some lettuce. Just put some drops of it around. 
just going to collect where the paper was folded. And latte. This one's a mess too. Drop them on top of each other. The peach bellini. And before I make a mess, I'm going to put in some blending solution. And it helps them blend together. So you can see it is quite different from you don't have to tip them around like this but because of the them going into that crease I'm doing that and it's blending them together more which might not be a good thing so I probably should have torn that in half before I started doing this but I do like those colors they're very pretty Let's try some citrus and see what that does. It's pretty cool. And um, ginger. Because I don't want that bright, bright green to just be a big old splot there. Help them to blend out into the other colors that were already there. Then I'm going to go back with some peach bellini because, <coughs> excuse me, that is disappearing. So I want to add a little bit more peach and then I think We'll have to call this one done. And I think I'll dry it so it doesn't keep spreading. This is going to push it around too. Alcohol ink dries pretty quickly. The alcohol dries fast. But I've got quite a pool on this paper. blend in with the others because they're all dry. That was caramel and this is lettuce. Just a tiny bit. Just so it has something to blend with. just made some distinct circles but I will be cutting it into window so it's not like it's going to be this circle blob in the center of something and we'll do one more sheet where is it there it is this one doesn't have 
the crease. I'll just pretty much do the same colors because I used pretty much all of them. Here's some lettuce. And some citrus. You never get the same thing twice when you do stuff like this. Latte. I think I'm almost out of latte. I use the browns quite a bit as much as I use alcohol inks. <clears throat> um, we haven't tried lemonade yet, so let's go with lemonade. solution. It kind of lightens the color up too when you put that on. You don't have to put that on. Okay, we lost the peach. ginger. this one better than this one but I think it's just because I added those blobs at the end so these look like foresty colors don't they I will be making some fun windows with them do with these if I'll I don't think I'll make windows with these but I could use them for other things I could make a ruffle a tracing paper ruffle okay well that was fun playing at least it was for me. Now I am going to do some stenciling on these pages. Finish up these pages. I have one, two, three done. So these three are left to be done. out an assortment of stencils I can use. I 
haven't used this one yet, so I'm going to use this. Looks like wildflowers. Um, I'm using Distress inks instead of Distress Oxides. I think I'll try the Wild Honey. See how that looks. Hmm. It's darker than I thought it would be. Which is fine. I, I intend these pages to be written on. I just stencil on there so they're not that's pretty. I like it. Just so they're not just stark white. put a little bit of this color around the edge of the page. to layer my stencils and this kind of looks like burlap and it helps fill in the space and you don't have to when you do a stencil you can just do a tiny little bit it doesn't have to be the whole page this one but we're going to use it again and I used forest moss for this and I'm just scattering the leaves the branches of leaves around the vintage photo and I have some dots where the dots go where the dots go they were just here because I used them Oh, it was the same stencil too. I mean, the same combination. Must be, I like the dots with the leaves, but I don't know where that stencil disappeared to. Oh, it's over here. I'm 
going to put a little forest moss around the edges of this page. more. I guess we'll do some more foliage and flowers. And I'm going to use spiced marmalade. This will be kind of bright, but I'll tone it down with some brown. Going back to the burlap, oh, I should go ahead and do the edges while I have this out. using these colors because my Woodlands journal has a has an autumn vibe to it. If you were doing your Woodlands to reflect summer or winter, you would use a different color scheme for your stenciling and everything else. So now those pages are ready. Now, what I'm going to do is turn off the camera and concentrate on picking pages to go with each journal. And then I'll figure out what kind of ephemera I want to make. And maybe I'll do a, uh, an ephemera video. I don't know. I'm playing this all by ear. So thanks for watching and hanging out with me today while I did some crafting. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were crafting along with me because I hope you're having a creative day today. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.